Alright, so just days before the Eagles wildcard matchup with the Bucks, the Birds seem really confident, despite the fact that it's been confirmed that one of their best players in AJ Brown is going to be out for the game. And speaking of AJ, we got some new drama involving him that's got some fans a little worried. Meanwhile, we got a massive update on Jalen Hurts' finger injury that is actually surprisingly promising. But Lane Johnson still wants the Eagles to commit to running the football. Plus, with all the injuries, it seems like Avante Maddox is going to be forced to switch positions in this playoff game against the Bucks. Speaking of which, who has the edge in this matchup? Well, we're going to talk about all that and more news in this video today, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. Okay, so we all know that the Eagles have been really struggling as of late. That's not a shocking revelation in the slightest, but now that it's playoff time, the Eagles just got to put all that behind them and go find a way to turn it around and get the job done. And the Eagles social media team, along with Jason Kelsey, tried their best to convince the fans that they're going to be able to do that as they dropped this hype video that I must admit got me pretty fired up. Fans are frustrated. We're frustrated. The playoffs are here, and we're not where we want to be yet. This is when you're most tested as a team. We begin storm now. The storm's gonna make us stronger. We got pain in our hearts. Let that shit go. We believe in every player in this locker. In our will, in our hearts, to push through do anything for this team and this city. For this city, I'll do anything. It's time for the playoffs. Now is when we come together. It's about who wants it most. And I know we f***ing want this. I mean, you gotta love this. And Jason Kelsey, who of course narrated it, spoke on it and what it represents as he and the team look forward and try and write the ship in the playoffs. Obviously, you know, we're frustrated with the way we performed the last month uh, and a half. Um, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we put ourselves in a position to be in the postseason and we've played really good football at times this season. And, um, you know, it's a reminder to ourselves and uh, to the fact that, you know, if we go out there and play up to the potential that we can play, uh, that we can compete with anybody and, and win on every given week. And Kelsey said it there at the end. If they play up to the potential that they can play at, they can compete with anybody. And of course, that applies to the Tampa Bay Bucks, who they literally blew out earlier in the season. And of course, yes, obviously we know that any given week, anything can happen in the NFL. That's been very apparent these last two games for the Birds. But still, this Eagles team should be able to beat the Buccaneers on Monday. I know there's been a lot of doubt with this team recently and it's well warranted, and I still am not fully confident or comfortable whatsoever, but I also do think that there's a solid shot that the Eagles can beat this team and it sounds like the players believe that too especially with now the playoffs being here and the guys getting that real sense of urgency that comes with that Kelsey sounded pretty confident there in his statement and multiple other guys also came out and revealed that the sense of urgency as well as their confidence is high ahead of this playoff matchup yeah man you can feel the intensity um you know everybody the the sense of urgency around the building um it's, it's up you know obviously um, it's the postseason so you know uh everybody's sense of urgency is up um players coaches you know cafeteria staff, you know, the cleaning staff, you know, every, everybody's here. So the entire staff, the intensity is up. So that's a good thing, a positive thing, you know, coming in a week, um, coming in this week about, uh, you know, after, you know, what we went through the last few weeks, you know, so um, that's a good thing. See y'all Monday, we're going we gonna to see how this go. I ain't finna, you know, give y'all no pep talk about, oh, we've been doing this and that. Nah, we're going out there Monday with the plan to win. And that's that. So you gotta like the sound of that. I mean, they both sounded really confident, especially Smitty, who, I mean, you gotta give the guy credit because I feel like out of everybody, he's one of the few guys that actually keeps it real. And again, like I said in my video not too long ago, it's just gonna be great to have him back this week. And he's gonna have to play a huge role because he's also gonna have to do something that he hasn't done since his rookie year, and that's be the wide receiver one. As the Eagles got some horrible news on Saturday morning with Adam Schefter reporting that, quote, Eagles wide receiver AJ Brown, who worked hard in his rehab to try to make it back this week, is out for Monday night's wildcard match of the Bucks due to his sprained knee per sources. Brown has made enough progress that if the Eagles advance, he could return for the divisional playoff, but he's out Monday night. And Jeremy Fowler also provided more context saying, quote, he wants to fully heal as much as he can and give it a go next week. So, I mean, at least we know it's not a serious injury and he could be back next week if the Birds do win, but it just really, really, really hurts to not have him against the Bucks. And Nick Sirianni did in fact confirm that he's going to be out for the matchup. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, AJ, um, it was going to be a stretch for AJ to play. Um, um, he did everything he possibly could to get himself ready. Obviously, you all saw the reports. Um, yeah, it's not looking like he's gonna he's gonna go, but he fought like crazy to try to do everything he could do um, to do so, which 
doesn't surprise me at all about AJ. Uh, he's tough and, and he'd do anything for his teammates. Uh, unfortunately, he won't be able to, uh, to rip it this week. So from that, it honestly just sounds like Nick, AJ, and the Eagles always kind of knew he was going to be out this week, which is one of the reasons why when I see people freaking out over this new supposed drama involving AJ Brown, it just doesn't make too much sense to me. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, I'm talking about how AJ Brown deleted all his Eagles and football related posts on Instagram, and then also deactivated his Twitter, as a lot of people are taking this as he's pissed off with the Eagles and he just doesn't want to be there anymore. When in reality, I mean, AJ Brown has been taking a lot of heat recently from the media. There's been a lot of unnecessary and unwarranted drama surrounding him the entire season and I think he probably just deleted it to get rid of distractions and just lock in on rehab and try and get as healthy as possible for the rest of this playoff run. I mean I personally don't really see a reason to read into it too much I just think honestly it's a good thing that he's getting rid of social media and just being as locked in as possible and I really just think people need to relax a little bit but what do you guys think? But now just getting back to this game it's obviously going to be really tough without AJ and they're going to be heavily relying on Devontae Smith who needs to have a decent game as well as other guys to pick up the slack and we also got to remember the Bucks defense is tough. Todd Bowles has those guys playing hard, and the blitzes that they send are going to present a really tough challenge for a Birds offense that has really struggled to handle the blitz this season, and the Eagles seem to know that they're in for a tough test, as Jason Kelsey made sure to give them their props ahead of the game. First of all, Todd is a tremendous coach, and uh, he is always focused on the front as being a big part of what makes his defenses really, really executed at a high level, and I think whenever you have young players, you see um, you know, if, if they're going to be good, I think you see uh, the enthusiasm to be out there, the excitement to be playing in the NFL, and you see uh, relentless energy. And I think that's what you see when you turn on the table with Tampa Bay. Not only are they really well schemed, not only do they have great players, uh, not only are they really well coached, uh, but they fly around. They they, they give relentless energy, and um, you know, I think that there's a number of young players up, up front for them uh, that have. Uh, popped out on film. I mean, Kelsey's right. The Bucks defense is definitely a tough challenge, and those blitzes will present an issue, which is why I and many other Eagles fans want to see the Eagles commit to one specific strategy on offense coming into this game, and that is running the football. We saw the Eagles dominate on the ground against the Bucks in Week 3. DeAndre Swift went off in that game, and there's also a really high chance of heavy rain and thunderstorms for this game, so not only does it seem like a smart idea to run the ball because of the rain, but it also just seems like they're going to be able to have a lot of success doing it as long as they commit to it. And it seems like all-pro right tackle Lane Johnson agrees with that, and he also thinks it'll help fix a lot of the Eagles offensive issues as after the loss to the Giants he apparently told reporter Sal Palantino that he thinks getting back to the run game could solve a lot of problems. I waited for Lane Johnson as he came out of the locker room. I've known him a long time and I said Lane how do you fix this? I didn't say what went wrong. I didn't say anything about the past. I said how do you fix this? What do you do? And he basically said to me you're looking at him. He said we got to lean on our strength we got to lean on our offensive line. We got to go back to what we can do as a running football team, a team that runs the football and he said plays play action off of it. Listen, I completely agree with Lane there. I mean, I feel like we've been saying this for a few weeks now, but we need to get back to being that physically imposing team that we have been the past two years before this. I think that'll really help solve a lot of the Eagles' offensive issues, and Jalen Hurts' finger injury gives the Eagles yet another huge reason to commit to running the ball. Although, it does seem like that may not be as big of a problem as initially expected because we got a kind of surprising but also a really promising update on Jalen Hurts' injury on Friday that's sure to provide some relief for some fans, because on Thursday, everyone was a little worried that Jalen Hurts wasn't throwing at practice, and he also hadn't thrown since he came out of the game with that injury against the Giants, but apparently, it was a different story on Friday, as he was reportedly throwing lasers at practice and deep balls. As Eagles star punt returner Britton Covey said, quote, For not throwing yesterday, we were all pretty concerned. I think everyone was concerned, and then for him to go out there today and do it the way he did it, it was kind of a sigh of relief from everyone, including including himself, I think. And Covey also said, quote, he wasn't just throwing, he was throwing deep balls, he was throwing lasers. I don't think it will be something that affects him, I haven't asked him, but just seeing him in person doing it, it was a sigh of relief for all of us. And then in addition to that, another one of his teammates, Devontae Maddox, gave another promising update saying, quote, he looks good, he always looks good when he throws, he throws a great ball, looks like the finger's good to me, watching from the sidelines and watching the film, it looks good to me, nice throws. So from what it sounds to me, Jalen Hurts' finger isn't going to affect him too much, which is obviously a great sign and one thing that we can worry a little less about. I mean, sure, it's still no doubt going to be tough for him to 
the playthrough, but Jalen's a warrior. He's going to fight through it, and from what it sounds like, it's not going to limit him too much. It's not going to really limit his abilities to do much of anything, at least from what we heard from his teammates. That being said, we still need to commit to running the ball for all the reasons that I stated previously, so hopefully they do that. Now, we just talked about Avante Maddox and his comments on Jalen Hurts, but something really big involving Maddox actually happened this week as well, and that is the fact that with all the injuries at safety, Maddox has apparently taken the majority of the first team reps during practice at that spot opposite Kevin Byer. And it seems like if Reed Blankenship can't go, which Nick Sirianni said he'd be a game time decision, so that's going to be something to keep your eye on as well. But if he can't go, Maddox is going to be the one starting at safety, and it sounds like he's comfortable there and confident in his abilities to play that position should he have to. It's cool. I mean, like I said, like he said, I've been working there at safety, and that's not like it won't be like the first time, you know, I've been at safety. I've been there a good amount of times throughout my career. So it's not like it's brand new. Oh, you're comfortable playing safety. I mean, is there any extra emotion or any extra feeling, different feeling now, now knowing that you're playing safety in a playoff game? Uh, no, because I'm confident. You know, I'm confident in myself as safety or nickel. It doesn't really matter. Um, I just make sure I just know what I'm doing. Um, make sure I'm communicating. Make sure I'm talking to KB on that side. Make sure I'm talking to my nickel corner, linebacker, wherever I need to speak to. And, you know, make sure we're all on the same page. And, you know, I'm used to communicating because that nickel spot, you got to communicate a lot, too. So it's just really just, a, like you said, a mirror position where you go down to the safety in the box or if you're in the back end. So it's definitely, definitely not a big deal for me. So again, it certainly sounds like he's confident in his abilities should he have to make that switch. And so is his teammate Kevin Byard, who Maddox would be playing alongside if he is in fact at safety on Monday. As Byard said that the chemistry with Maddox is good, and he thinks he'll be able to slide right in and have success. Yeah, I mean, Vontae, he's, he's a veteran guy. He's been back there with me. Um, and, but they're also going to work some other guys in there as well. I mean, at least during practice, but I think Vontae's going to be out there with me. But he's a vet. He's been in his league for a while. He's played safety as well. So that's a pretty easy transition. Obviously, Reed is a really good player, but I uh, feel very confident with Vontae back there. We'll be able to you know, spin things pretty good yeah but like I said I mean it's just one of those things where he's been in the meetings with us this whole you know whole season or whatever so uh the chemistry has been good the communication has been great uh it'll be fun to see you know how things you know turn out in the game for sure I really don't think we should be too worried about this potential switch I mean Maddox is a good player and nickel and safety are very similar positions Maddox has also played safety before in his NFL career and he was successful so I think he should be fine if he does have to make that switch plus then that means that rookie Keely Ringo will for sure be out on the field which is great because he's been locked down ever since getting his chance and then James Bradbury can then probably go into the slot where hopefully he won't get cooked too bad because I mean the Eagles defense doesn't have it too easy either They've struggled all year, and they got to deal with the likes of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, along with Baker Mayfield, who's been surprisingly good this year. But that being said, we saw this same defense dominate the Bucks in Week 3, so let's just hope they can do it again. I mean, I know everyone's down on this team right now, I know it hasn't been good at all, and it's hard to have any sort of faith, but I'm going to be a typical delusional Philly fan and pick the Birds to win 28-21. to Just please don't let me down. Now, I just want to say real quick, thank you all for 30,000 subscribers. That's just an insane milestone. It doesn't even feel real. I mean, I've worked really hard at this, so I really do appreciate every single one one of you that likes, comments, subscribe to the channel, watches these videos, just shows any type of support, it really does mean the world to me, so thank you all so much for 30,000. And also, if you did enjoy this video and want to see others like it coming in the future, covering this Bucks playoff game, and just after that into the offseason, or also for the rest of this playoff run, make sure you subscribe and also turn on notifications. Also, drop a like down in this video if you did enjoy it and want to show some support, and leave a comment down below just regarding anything that I talked about in this video. And if you want to watch another video going over Dallas Goddard's comments saying that the Eagles were coasting at the end of the season, among other things, you can go check this out right here now with all that being said that's pretty much all i got for this one guys so thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video